Hi, I'm Victor. I'm going to talk about joint work with Daniel Schritter and Dave Bly on adapting text embedding methods for causal inference. Okay, so here's a motivating example uh, illustrating the broad approach. So in this example, there's some outcome that we're interested in. Uh, in this case, the score of uh, a Reddit post. Uh, and there's some treatment that we're interested in. Uh, in this case, the self-labeled gender of the poster uh, on this post. And the question that we want to know is what is the causal effect of this treatment, this, this treatment attribute of the text on the outcome attribute of the text? So what is the effect of this gender label on the popularity of the post, right? Uh, and uh, another like key element of this is we're going to observe the text data that goes along with the post, and that will be critical later. Okay, so uh, okay, so we want this causal effect of the treatment on the outcome. Uh, there's a really naive thing that we could do, which is just look at the uh, difference in expected outcomes uh, for men, for male label posts, and for female label posts, and say, oh, the difference between those things is 30. Uh, it's not made of data, but suppose it's 30. And we can say, ah, well, that that uh, expected difference is, uh, you know, a measure of the causal effect of the gender label. Uh, but of course, correlation is not causation, and so that doesn't work. Uh, and the reason it doesn't work is that there could be a common cause of the outcome, the upvotes that the post receives, and the label of the gender. Uh, and in particular, uh, the way that would work in this case is that the, the true gender of the poster uh, probably pretty strongly influences the labeled gender of the poster. Uh, but uh, the true gender might also influence the kind of things get written in the post. So men and women might write about different topics or might write with different styles. Right? And the, the text of the post also influences the, the amount of upvotes that the post receives. Uh, and so this, this common cause uh, means that just like the raw association between the outcome and the treatment is not going to be the causal effect. It's not what we'd actually see happen uh, if we intervene and change the, label, the gender label. All right, so in particular, what we're interested in uh, is this parameter psi, the ATT, which we're going to formalize as the difference and expected outcomes between uh, uh, if the difference in expected outcomes across men uh, between intervening and setting the gendered label to say men uh, versus intervening and uh, setting the gender label to say female, right? So this is the ATT. So this is, this is the counterfactual quantity that we're trying to estimate. Uh, okay, so of course, in general, uh, you can't get causal effects from observational data without assuming a little bit more. Uh, but it turns out that the, the extra thing that we need to assume is already baked into this graphical model. Uh, and namely, the, the key assumption here is that any common causes of the outcome and the gender label uh, pass through the text of the post itself, right? So, we're, so that is, we're going to assume that the observed words uh, carry enough information in principle to account for all common causes of the treatment and the outcome. Right, and, uh, and if that's true, then at least in principle, it's possible to identify the causal effect from the observational data. Okay, good, so the problem's now solved in principle, uh, but in practice, there's still an issue. And that issue is that text is just an extremely high dimensional object, uh, and so when we go and try and do the, uh, we adjust for the text in order to estimate the causal effect, we have just an impossible statistical problem, right? Like, like if there's just a high dimensional regression, which we just do not know how to solve in practice. Okay, great. So, uh, okay, so faced with that, we might say, ah, no, no problem. We know how to deal with high dimensional text. We'll just uh, impose some dimensionality reduction on it ahead of time. So this is the commonly done thing, right? So we'll fit a topic model or whatever. Uh, but the problem we have there is if you fit a topic model and use the topics as features and do some kind of feature extraction, uh, there's no guarantee that the information in the words preserved by the dimensionality reduction will be the information that's required to identify the causal effect, right? That is, you might, in doing the dimensionality reduction, throw out the information that was necessary to like have causal identification. Right, and so, so this is the key thing. Like, what can we do about this high dimensional text uh, that will actually still preserve causal identification? Okay, so this paper uh, is based really just on two insights. Uh, the first insight is that the information in W that we need for causal adjustment is exactly the information which is jointly relevant to the prediction of both the treatment and the outcome. Uh, so by that, I mean that if there's some piece of information in W, which would help us predict the, the gender label of the Reddit post, 
but which wouldn't be useful for predicting the score, then we can safely throw that information away, right? It's, it's not going to matter uh, for, for confounding and we can still get an accurate causal effect even if we lose it, right? Uh, the second insight is that uh, all of these outcomes, like the scores on Reddit posts and, as, and you know, of exam in examples of this flavor, uh, these scores are produced by humans reading the text and processing it, right? And so in particular, even though there's all kinds of like, in principle, like weird correlation structures uh, possible in text, uh, what matters is really just like the natural language structure of the text, right? Like the things that are significant are things like topic and sentiment, whatever, like human compatible concepts, right? Because humans are actually generating the labels. Okay, so taken together, these two things mean, well, if we can do some kind of dimensionality reduction, uh, which is one, supervised so that we retain the ability to predict the treatment and outcome, uh, and two, res respects the natural language structure uh, of the text, right, like preserves that kind of natural language information, then we should expect this information uh, to preserve uh, causal identification. Uh, okay, good. so now let me just skip ahead. Uh, so all of this is just saying that we can formalize these intuitions that I just gave uh, and do something with that, right? And then and prove that indeed we're gonna get causal identification and causal estimation. Okay, so, so how do we actually do it? Uh, here's a concrete example. Uh, so we're just gonna adapt a BERT type model. Uh, so what we do with the BERT model is take in the words of the Reddit post, uh, pass that into this pre-trained language model, this natural language understanding tool, uh, use that to produce an embedding vector lambda, right? Uh, so that's that's now a, a, a low dimensional representation of the text. And then from that embedding vector lambda, we'll predict the treatment in order to learn a propensity score. Uh, and from the same embedding vector in vector lambda, we're going to predict the expected outcome. Uh, we're gonna, sorry, we're going to predict y in order to learn uh, an expected outcome model, right? So the propensity score is g hat in this, and the expected outcome is q hat in this. Uh, and with g hat and q hat in hand, uh, we can plug those into some non-parametric estimator of a causal effect, uh, and that will let us uh, uh, get get at the ATT. Okay, uh, so now we we have a method. We know it should work in principle. Uh, how do we actually test that in practice? Uh, let me just comment that the, the sort of key difficulty here is that, of course, because we're, we're after causal effects, uh, there's no data set with ground truth ATTs. I never see like a Reddit post written by with both the male and female label. It just can't happen, right? Uh, so normally you address that by just simulating data, uh, but there's also no way to realistically simulate text, right? There's a very hard simulation problem in this particular context. Uh, and so let me just comment that we, we did find some clever work around to this uh, using extra covariates of the text uh, that lets us uh, come up with a pretty realistic semi-synthetic uh, evaluation environment. Uh, okay, so here is the upshot of the semi-synthetic evaluation environment. This basically just says if you use these like neural model type things uh, in order to do the causal adjustment, then even in situations where you have a lot of noise and a lot of confounding and the naive thing would be completely misleading, uh, these neural adjustment methods still work quite well. Uh, okay, and uh, here's a simple application uh, where we basically show that we apply this to three different subreddits. Uh, where gender labeling is common, and we show that in two of them, uh, women have like a fairly substantial bonus, uh, like being labeled as a woman gives you a fairly substantial score bonus, and in one there's just no effect one way or the other.